documents be delivered. Debate, the Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Nice to see you. Nice to speak on behalf of the residents of Calgary Centre for the first time in this Parliament. I really appreciate the fact that we have a speech here today on the Canada Infrastructure Bank when it first ran in Calgary Centre in 2019. This is one of the key items on the agenda about one of the boondoggles that this government is actually foisting upon Canadians here. And when I say boondoggle, I, I mean literally boondoggle. Billions of dollars going into a slush fund that doesn't actually meet a requirement that was necessary in the Canadian economy at that point in time. And I say that, Madam Speaker, because I can assure you I worked in the finance industry and there were all kinds of infrastructure funds across Canada. The thing about those infrastructure funds is they invest in actual projects that make sense to invest in. That is, there is a return of capital. Now, the thing about in infrastructure funds is the return of capital associated with infrastructure is much lower than it is with any other investment. And that's because most infrastructure is long-lifed assets. There's a lot of security involved with it. So it's not going away anytime soon. And it usually has a strong revenue profile associated with that infrastructure, whatever it is, whether it be uh, you know, new rail opportunities or new, uh, new service opportunities that serve Canadians. But every one of those has to meet a mark. And that mark, of course, is mathematical. It's finance. Now, meeting a cost of capital that's very low is not hard to do, and that's why so many infrastructure funds had funds available for investing in infrastructure in Canada. What we didn't have available was boondoggle funds, and this government saw the, the uh, opportunity to say, we need some boondoggle funds in infrastructure in Canada. Every infrastructure fund in Canada said, no, we don't. We don't need any more infrastructure. We're, we're finding difficulty finding enough good investment opportunities in infrastructure in Canada that we don't need another five billion bucks competing with us that's going to be slipping money under the table, frankly, to people on projects that don't make economic sense. And there are a lot of projects in Canada that make economic sense for these infrastructure funds. Now, the issue about competition here is very prevalent because you realize that with all these infrastructure funds that had previously been set up because so many funds in Canada, so many investors in Canada recognized that Canada had fallen behind on its infrastructure investments and needed more infrastructure. And they're stalled under this government for one reason, this government is not understanding about what actual projects need to get developed in Canada. It's a problem. So their response to that economic malaise that they've created in the economy is just to put an extra billions of dollars into this instrument, into the Canadian economy, that doesn't have to meet a test of actual economic performance. It's a way around it. It's what they call sustainable finance. And you'll know, Madam Speaker, my colleagues here all know that I spent a number of years, a couple decades, in the finance industry. These things are mathematical at the end of the day. And I noticed my, my colleague from Kingston the Islands is over there winking at me because he always talks about finance and I get to instruct him a lot. But the other, the other point here, Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, is of course that all these things make sense. At the end of the day, you can't have sustainable finance is a way of playing games around where the return actually comes. Because the return actually doesn't come at the end of the day with these funds. What it is is a transfer of wealth from all these funds, from all these Canadians, into the pockets of insiders. And I can actually quote how many of these insiders are being paid in this boondoggle the Liberals have created. They've got insiders here, and despite the fact that they've hardly invested any money from this Canada Infrastructure Bank, they've collected in the last couple of years, 2020, 2021, almost $7 million in bonuses. Every employee of this boondoggle investment infrastructure bank actually gets bonuses despite, despite the fact that at one point in time here they had one investment. One investment with a provincial infrastructure system in Quebec that was layered behind in structure behind the actual uh, pension fund in Quebec. And if you want to talk about how that's, uh, you know, uh, performing for the Canadian people, I can go into that as well. But then in 2021-22, again, $7.7 .7 million in bonuses to these Liberal insiders that they've appointed over there, transferring money again from Canadians to their friends. It's a boondoggle of the highest order. Investing in economic uh, opportunities that don't exist, that aren't there, that are actually just ways of government saying, we're trying to paper over the fact that we've ruined the economy. So we'll get some money being invested here 
into a sector where it no longer makes economic sense. I spoke earlier, Madam Speaker, about this whole concept of sustainable finance. There's no such thing as sustainable finance. There's finance. Finance has always been sustainable. The whole thing about math is the numbers have to go around at the end of the day. And I see my colleague from Kingston the Island shrugging about that, like, oh, who cares about if the numbers go around? Well, they do. It matters, Madam Speaker. It matters a lot because at the end of the day, somebody's paying the price. And in this case, the people paying the price are the taxpayers of Canada. And they're paying it to the Liberal insiders. And congratulations if you're on the inside of that. You're doing, you're making a good living. If you're regular Canadians, you've seen what's happened to the economy as a result of this government's actions. You've ruined the economy. You've actually have investment leaving this country in the hundreds of billions of dollars over the last eight years. A significant egress of capital. Canada Pension Plan Investment Board doesn't even invest in Canada. It invests in foreign entities because it does not see the opportunity to invest in Canada. The Organization of Exporting and Developing Countries doesn't see the opportunity in Canada. It has this as the lowest ranked growth company out of their 40 members over the next few decades, not the next year, not the next two years. For the foreseeable future, Canada is practically uninvestable because of this government's policies. Now, I know it's a laughing matter for my colleagues across the way. It's not a laughing matter. Our entire economy depends on this $1.3 trillion in debt, doubling the national debt. This is not conducive to an actual economy that works, and we've got to get back to making that economy work. What did the government do this year? They doubled down on that. Like, just not the Canada Infrastructure Bank, but that's not working, so they put $15 billion into a new one, the Canada Growth Fund. Again, without much of a mandate, not passed, it's just, okay, here's some money. We need to have another slush fund that we need to invest in projects that make no economic sense, but make political sense for how to shovel the money out the door a little more, collect some friends, put some money in everybody's pockets. It's all a circular economy, as they say, and it's a sustainable finance model. Well, I suggest it's a sustainable finance model for those stuffing money in their jeans. For the rest of Canadians, it's not sustainable at all. It's a boondoggle. It's a way to make your friends rich at the expense of taxpayers. And we're here for Canadians at, at the end of the day, Madam Speaker. Canadians that pay their taxes, that expect government to operate efficiently and effectively. Nothing of that order is happening here right now. The opaque nature of every one of these funds and the investments they make is just obscene. There is no way we can continue on this course with continuing billions and billions and billions of dollars going into projects that the Liberals favour that have no foreseeable outcome at the end of the day. It is really just uh, a way of, of uh, spinning out and making Canadians more and more poor. Now, I, I look at this because I know in the report, and we're talking about the report here, the concurrence report, Madam Speaker, and I will refer to it because you actually had Yves Giroux, the parliamentary budget officer, a man I greatly respect and actually have spent a lot of time discussing finance with, but he actually says that despite the CIB's goal of leveraging private investment, projects to date have been exclusively funded by federal, provincial and municipal levels of government. So there is no leveraging going on as was the concept and the whole goal of this. And that's because nobody believes this infrastructure bank is actually going to do anything good at the end of the day. It's actually just going to put money again into the pockets of insiders. And that's a shame. It's a shame, that, Madam Speaker, because there's so much more we could be doing with taxpayers' funds. We could be putting uh, money into the needs of Canadians here, and we're not doing that right now. We're running massive deficits. This is part of that massive deficit. When people ask me back home, what would you cut if you're Canadian, if you, if you were government? One of the first things I talk about is the Canada Infrastructure Bank, because it is a boondoggle. Get rid of the boondoggles first and foremost before you actually have to start making real cuts. And this government eventually will have to make real cuts. We'll be ahead of them. We'll be cutting the boondoggles out first and foremost and getting us back to balance in this Canadian economy. Madam Speaker, thank you for the time today. Much appreciated. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety, Democratic Institutions and Intergovernmental Affairs.
Thank you, Madam Speaker. I hear the members opposite go, say, oh, here we go. I think that's because they realize some facts are about to be dropped on their imaginary <laughs> next three hours. Madam Speaker, the member opposite spoke about boondoggle, yet the Conservatives infrastructure plan consisted of fake lakes, <laughs> fake photo ops, and he is referring to the Canada Infrastructure Bank as not getting anything done. So I'd like to ask him about a project specifically in his home prov yeah. province of Alberta, which is going to create 143,000 new irrigated acres. Un appel au règlement, l'honorable député de Jonquière. Pour l'interprète, puisque je ne sais pas s'il y a des gens qui parlent autour, mais c'est difficile pour elle de, de traduire ce que, ce que dit la députée. Oui, alors, uh, I just want to remind members uh, that, you know, uh, if you're having side conversations or trying to participate and, and it's not your turn to participate, it does create problems for the interpreters to be able to, uh, to uh, interpret what the actual speaker being recognized is saying. Yeah. So I would just... Um, Est-ce que vous avez compris une partie ou c'est tout le... Tout, Qu'est-ce qu'elle a dit? Okay. Uh, so the young member can wrap it up. She has 18 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There's a project in Alberta that will create 143, over 143,000 new acres of irrigated infrastructure to reduce floods. Does the member opposite believe that residents in Alberta and farmers should have their fields flooded, that they should don't deserve infrastructure because the Conservatives would prefer to cancel it? Yeah. That's what it a member for Calgary Centre. Well, I think my colleague for the question, it does show she does, she does have some... Again, I just want to remind members, if they are not being recognized, they shouldn't be speaking. The Honourable Member for Calgary Centre. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank my colleague for the important question. It's good to hear that she actually does pay attention to some of the development that's happening outside of her home province, including in my province of Alberta. Yes, irrigation that first came up in the 1930s was a way to open up the Dust Bowl you know, Palliser's Triangle, if you will, make sure we had some irrigable land and the, the, the water that flows through are the Rocky Mountain systems and all the way down actually gets stored. It was an inventive way of actually storing some of that water at that point in time. And there's always been that opportunity to make sure that there's economic progress. What has made that more uh, viable, and if it was totally viable, there would be infrastructure funds competing for it. But what makes that more viable, frankly, is the fact that agriculture is worth more now because this government has actually punished farmers to the level where crops prices have gone up. Take a look at how that has affected Canadians at the food store. Canadians are paying far more for food because of this government's policies. Of course, we're going to need more food. We're going to need more of everything going forward here, and it's going to cost about 10% more per year thanks to this government's inflationary policies. Thank you. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Dans ma circonscription à Longueuil, euh, il faut refaire le système des goûts. C'est assez important comme travaux. On parle d'une facture de 600 millions de dollars juste pour Longueuil. La Ville a aussi d'immenses projets pour électrifier son parc de transport collectif, les autobus. On veut faire ça, mais ça aussi, c'est des millions, des millions et des millions de dollars. Sans parler, évidemment, de la crise du logement. On a des projets pour construire du logement. On, a, on en a besoin comme ailleurs. Bon, là-dedans, dans la banque d'infrastructure, il y a énormément d'argent. Est-ce que, si on abolit ça, est-ce que mon collègue est d'accord qu'il faut transférer les sommes à Québec? Parce que les villes, les villes, ce sont des créatures de Québec, des provinces. Donc, c'est Québec et les villes qui connaissent les besoins de leur municipalité, de leurs gens. Alors, est-ce qu'il est d'accord qu'on transfère tout l'argent vers Québec? The Armament for Calgary Centre? Merci beaucoup, Madame le Président, et j'apprécie la question de mon collègue du Bloc québécois. Et j'ai lu aussi le, le rapport du Bloc québécois, le, 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 le rapport dissident, du rapport euh, du concurrence qu'on a reçu, et il a indiqué que c'est un bon d'angle aussi, c'est quelque chose pour le gouvernement fédéral de donner des argent pour euh, euh, pousser le, le pouce sur le, les dossiers qu'ils veulent dans la province de Québec. Et C'est vrai, c'est vrai, c'est un, euh, un instrument économique pour le gouvernement fédéral et ce n'est pas quelque chose pour, euh, qui est utile pour la, la balance de l'économie au Canada. Merci beaucoup. Uh, we have time for a brief question. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. 
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And my question will be very brief. You know, polls show the, the members today in his intervention spoke about the CPP, and polls show that Albertans are overwhelmingly opposed to the, the plan by Daniel Smith to introduce the APP, the Alberta Pension Plan. Now, we know that the leader of the official opposition has, has said that he does not support the Alberta Pension Plan. I think that Albertans deserve to know how their members of Parliament stand on this. I do not support the Alberta Pension Plan. Could the member tell us, does he support or not support the Alberta Pension Plan? The Honourable Member of Calgary Centre, a brief answer. I appreciate the question from my colleague from Edmonton. Let me, uh, let me say very clearly that what I support is an independent pension plan, an independent pension plan for all of Canadians, not the one the NDP keeps bringing to the floor of the House of Commons here where they want to manipulate at the political level what those pension plans invest in, which are going to harm frankly, all Canadians in their retirement years. And that's what's going to destroy the pension ability of Canadians, as opposed to you know, what Albertans decide by themselves in a referendum, about what's, where they want their pension funds managed. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate, the Honourable